Okay, we've got another track right here. Some track I've been doing for a while. So we've got some stuff. Here's some guitar in the back of that. Okay, that sounds great. It's going to be cool when we get the mix going on here. I'll explain this mix a little more later on, but first I'm going to talk about one thing. Your master output and how to set your master output up. We do not want distortion, okay? When you listen to a record and radio, there's always some sort of headroom. It's a room between or a distance between the loudest sound and the ceiling. That's our headroom. And I know this is like something that's abstract in your brain. You got to think about, well, where's this headroom at? I don't get that. So the idea is never to distort a sound. You know, when you hear a sound in a club, it's not really blasting when we're recording it. We're making sure it's enough room so that when the guy's in the club playing it, he just ups the sound and he can just turn it up and it's still not distorting. And we're creating headroom. Now, here's what we're doing here, for example. You notice here in this section right here, we've got uh, an EQ. See that? A little EQ right there. And then here I've got a compressor, right? It's got a clean limit. See, this is a clean limit right here. What we're doing, we're limiting anything to go above a certain threshold level. Now, I got a knee here. This is about an 8.0 dB knee, so it's a really short knee right there. And then we got a 20 to 1 compression ratio. It's kind of cool. And we got a release, about a 120 release. And I'll play the track. Turn the sound down some. you notice here that this little square goes right there. When the guitar comes in, it's getting louder. But it's not going past the threshold level. We're not allowing that. We're keeping headroom in this mix. It's only about a 1.8 dB gain, a little bit of gain there. Threshold is 5.0. We are 5 dB away from zero. We don't want to get to zero. Zero is the top. Zero is the ceiling. That's the top, man. You want to get past the top. We want to be somewhere that 5 dB level there. So when these sounds coming in and out the mix, they're not going to just boom. We're going to just have to go back again and say, well, what happened? You don't need that. We need to make sure the levels are clean and that our top of the ceiling is there, but we don't want to go close to it. And this is how we do it. So I got a little compressor there, and I got an EQ here. This is a one-band EQ. This is what I'm doing one band. I'm not going to EQ anything pretty much. If I have to, I will later on refer to the EQ someplace else. I want to use this as a limiter. So if I didn't want EQ, and I had the EQ, I might have the EQ for bass. When I'm doing rock and roll. Rock and roll is not really a bass-specific music. You're not going to have that much bass sound for the bass player. You know, I'll come in here and we'll have this nice bass sound, but we won't have this heavy, deep bottom as you'll get in reggae or in the heavier hip-hop or R&B tracks. Um, and some of the Latin music, you know, maybe some Brazilian sambas are a little more bassy, but not so much so, because they have a difference between the, the two the drums um, the bata, and then you got your, your, your um, bass sound. But the real thing here is that we want to keep everything pretty much in the right spectrum. Now here we've got a bunch of presets you can see right here. We've got special effects, piano, all kinds of stuff, DJ, mix for EQs. So a different EQ things actually come with this, and this we have none at all for the one band. And the one band has a few here, let's see what we got here. Uh, we got vocals, toms, piano, see, so overhead drums, nothing really, so we really don't actually EQ the mix on unless we have to roll some bass off. So I would normally go here, I'd find a specific bass frequency area or at the bottom end of this, and I may go to here and we'll say we'll go to um, here. I get my low pass going on and pull it out to there. Maybe if I wanted to do a little bit of EQ on here, then play back. But you see, we're still not going above. No distortion, not getting too high in there. Now, another way to do this is to, let's say we get rid of this EQ here. I don't really need that. You can take this and move it up to here. See that? I can move it anywhere here in my inserts. Come on, let's move it down. There you go. So you can move your inserts around 
as well. Now, sometimes if you bought some plugins, there are some plugins that you might have bought that are specifically designed just for a mastering effect. And here, I've got one of the CD Master 6, but this is a Maxim. It's a pretty good plugin right here. You can tell already, right? Great plugin. It works really well. But the whole idea here is to make sure that we establish some sort of ceiling on the master fader output. This is where you start mixing. You've got an idea where you're going. You know what the peak is going to be at. You're going to hold that ceiling down so that you never go above it and create this headroom in the mix. It's important to know and always do that.